Good morning and welcome to IPC 144 NBB. Uh, my name is Fardad. You should have received an email from me, hopefully. But it was right and good. My apologies for all the ordeal that you saw. Many things went wrong back to back. Um, actually, I came in the morning at 7 o'clock and everything worked. So I said, it's not going to be any issue, and it happened. That's called Murphy's Law. Okay, remember that. Okay, uh, so, yeah, my name is Fardad, and I'm going to take care of your uh, uh, IPC 144. And uh, um, this thing is loose, let it be. Um, uh, let me bring up uh, the, your, your uh, uh, subject, and... Uh, and I'll go through all the details of the subject today. It's going to be, today it's going to be all preaching and I'm going to tell you to study and I'm going to tell you how to study. What is it about that? What are, you, what are your goals? What you're going to do? And all the good things that you need to know. Many of you already by saying this, oh God, you know, I don't want to listen to this. But I know, but we, we have to go through this. And believe it or not, uh, it is actually helpful. Okay? So, um, let me close this down, open up uh, the, your um, section. Uh, so, uh, and it's going to send me an authentication request. So you have done your settings and you are uh, set up with Global Protect. You know how everything works. They, they, you should have had some sessions with uh, uh, ULI 101 or things like that. They, do, they talk about these things, right? So, or in your orientation day. So um, uh, you have to have Global Protect installed on your computer so you can access uh, uh, resources that we have behind the firewall. Uh, that's what you need to do. Uh, you are here to um, start um, learning how to program uh, with a language called C. Um, I'll go through that one in a second. Uh, but first, let me tell you who I am and what we do in this subject. And then after that, we're going to uh, kick in. So IPC 144NBB. I'll open up the announcement that I sent you. We'll go through it together. And uh, unfortunately, they put the lab as the first session. That's pretty awkward, because usually you study, then you do the lab, right? So this lab session, consider it as just the preaching time. Um, when I say there's going to be a quiz on something, it's the next lab. So your week starts next week. Next, uh, uh, next day. So uh, essentially everything starts the next day and that's that. Um, one thing I want to let you know is that uh, now you're in college. Okay? That's the very first thing I want to tell you know. When you're back on me talking to someone else, that's extremely disrespectful to your professor. Don't do that. Okay? If I talk, you zip. I do not want to see anybody's mouth talking unless you are talking to me for a question. If you are talking with your friend for, oh, that's my coffee, don't touch it, I understand that. Okay, conversations after the class, do whatever you want to do. Inside class, I talk, you listen. Done. Okay, do we understand this? Are we all okay? You're in college, I know. Many of you came from high school. This is not high school. It's a different vibe. If a different, it's a different thing. Okay, you gotta be careful about it. Okay, so that's that. I'm not a scary person, actually. Seriously, <laughs> I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm the, the cool guy in here. So so sorry to tell you that, but I have to put that thing out so so we all know. Um, uh, my name is Fardat. Uh, F-A-R-D-A-D. -A -A um, I've been doing this since 1996. 
do the math. 20 something years old, years of doing this. Um, I'm one of those people who loves to teach. I'm not just here because I like another thing to do, uh, and I couldn't, and I came over, so I'm gonna go teach since I can't do that, okay? I actually love doing this, okay? So um, please keep that in mind. Um, we're gonna have lectures and labs, which is going to be, we're gonna come talk about things, whatever we are talking about, and we're gonna go through many different aspects of the language and things, and then we're gonna give you assignments, you start, work, start doing them at home, then you come to, to, to lab, you ask questions about it, okay? And we'll do like that, we'll, we'll work like that. So it's learn, work, learn, work. At the end of, in every lab, I'm gonna take a very short quiz. Quizzes that are like 10 minutes, four minutes, six minutes. Very small questions to see if you actually kept track of what we are going through. And we have uh, a midterm and a final. Uh, uh, we have total of eight workshops. The first workshops could be two parts. It's not 100%. Uh, again, uh, things may change as it goes through. I uh, don't usually teach IPC 144. My request is to give, put, put me in IPC 144. The next year, I'll go 244. The next year, I'll go 345. So I take my students with me, OK? So um, I am the lead of uh, second, sub sec second semester core programming courses. So uh, the things that you see designs to submit your stuff, that's me, okay? You're gonna hate me for that, I know, but that's my resume, okay? Um, go on YouTube, Google Fardat, Seneca, 5,000, uh, 4, 400, lectures are gonna come up since the dawn of dinosaurs. So um, you can take a look at them. Uh, every single thing that I do, I record, and I put it on YouTube, and you have access to it. So, but that doesn't mean you can't come to the class, because you saw Murphy's Law. Right now I'm working, talking, and hopefully everything's working. I go home and I see, oops, audio is not recorded. Oops, the video is flickering. Things like that, this happens. This is just something that I do in case you need to review and get sick and things like that. So be aware, this is not something that anybody does. So this is just something added to the uh, uh, things that we have. It's not 100%, it might happen or not. Please go through the course information. There is a quiz on this. Okay, so the information you see in here in the addendum that I'm going to bring up, that's your first quiz. And you have to get 100% on it to be able to do anything else in class. And you have 10 attempts to get 100%. So you, have, you can do it 10 times back to back. So the questions, what is it going to be the questions? What, what requirements you need to have to pass the subject? I just want to force you guys to read these. because. Statistically, any text more than four or five lines, the first four or four, five lines are read, and the rest is glanced. <laughs> That's reality, I'm sorry. When I put something like that, read the three, ah, I know, it's gonna, and then you're not gonna read the list. So I put a quiz on this, and you have to get 100% in that quiz for other quizzes to be visible, for your tests to be visible, yes? Everything in my class is online. Quiz, test, uh, workshops, everything. I do not, you do not use a single piece of paper other than the reference sheet you bring for your test and a blank piece of paper you bring for your rough, rough stuff. That's it. And I'll take that away and if I don't need it, I throw it to garbage. I'm not gonna give it back to you. So these, this, these are the only papers that I use. I, I have never, I haven't used papers in 15 years, okay? Um, Chat GPT users um, and uh, people who like to like online stuff because they have access to everything. When you are doing your test, the internet is closed. You have access to nothing other than a text editor and a place you're supposed to give your things. So you're on your own, okay, for your tests. Um, the rest of the stuff, we'll talk about it. Any questions, stop me, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm like my 10 year old daughter, I'm a chatterbox. I keep talking, 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 and I go fast. So if I'm too fast, I'll you slow down. If you see something's wrong, stop me. 
And at the end of the session, I'm going to have ask a very uh, important question. And I want you to all think about it. Now, you're going to answer it at the end. What do you like for your professor to do? And what do you dislike for a professor to do? I want to know what is your likes and dislikes. And it's possible I'll try to accommodate it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Think about it. Don't tell me, I like a student who gives A pluses to everyone. No, we can't, we can't do that. That I can't do. Okay, but things that usually a prof needs to do. I don't want you to be a jackass. That's, oops, it's going on YouTube. But anyways, so you, you, you got to, st stuff like that, okay? And please call me Fardat. Don't call me Professor. Don't call me Mr. Soli Manlu. Fardat is fine. Um, yeah. Um, that's that. Course information, I'll go through it, how to get help, how to keep contact with me. Quizzes, there are going to be one quiz every week that you're coming in. We are aiming for 12 quizzes and dropping the least two marks if it, if it goes more than 10. If it's 10, all counts. If it goes more than 10, anything more than 10, I'll drop it. I could never reach to 10. Yes. So the lecture day or on the lab day? Lab day. Lab day. Quizzes are all, any assessment happens in lab day because that's when you have the computers. And you cannot use your personal computers to do the tests. So get you used to these things. Get used to working with them. So what I do to make sure that everything goes good, I'll give you a demo test. So I'll give you a demo test and I'll leave it open that you can do it over and over and over as many times as you want. And, uh, and you, you do this demo test to try and make sure to get used to the environment you're in. So when the test happens, you don't get lost in it. I'll tell, and I demo it to you. So first on a YouTube video, I'll do the test and I'll record it and I'll show you how it's done. So when you do it, everything is fine and dandy. Okay? So that's that. You have eight workshops, five comes before the study break. You have one week study break halfway through the semester. It's study break. It's not beer drinking break, it's not partying week, okay? It's study break. For one week, you should study the material you learn and try to catch up with what we have. Um, I confess, when I was a student, I never did a study break. It was like, yeehaw! It was, so, but please don't do that, okay? Please uh, uh, use it as a study break. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have five workshops uh, and three workshops after and a project. A project, I, uh, when I design it, you'll see what it is. My aim for the project is to have five milestones. You know what a milestone means. Five, five parts. So the project, is, so workshops are little things, like find the average of these three numbers. Little things, you know what I mean? Like, oh, the, the student got these numbers, tell me if the student passed or not. Very small little thing. The project is a point of sale system that I want you to write, is uh, a parking that I want you to write. Like, the cars come and then you assign them spots and stuff like that. So it's a big thing. And I guide you through it and I'll give you steps to do it. And by the end, you're going to have five milestones. Milestone one, I'm going to ask you to make the little bricks. Then milestone two, I'm going to put the bricks together and make small walls. On milestone three, I'm going to say put the walls together and make small rooms. Milestone four, I'm going to tell you how to make a floor. Milestone five, I'm going to put the floors together and you have a high rise. Okay, so it goes like that. I'll, I'll take you through it uh, and that's how it happens for the project. For the project, the first four milestones are the engine of the thing. So you are building all the little pieces. Milestone number five, you assemble it all together and you have the thing. The first four milestones, if there are four, it may be three, depending on how, we, how it's designed. The first pre preliminary mi milestones, those milestones have a zero or one. They don't have partial marks because it is for you to just prepare the beginning of stuff. Uh, so what you do, you get either 10% in it or nothing. But it has a very loose due date. So when I tell you the due date is here, even if you give me one week late, you still get the full mark in it. It's just 
to those four milestones is because you are students. And as soon as you put your bum bum on that chair, you procrastinate. That's what students do. It's in your DNA. That's something. That, those milestones just to force you to do it now. Don't leave it for the end of the semester. Okay? That's what it is. And so you have to submit those four milestones successful or unsuccessful. So submission of those are needed because that's the engine of everything. And then milestone number five, I'll separate it to six different submissions based on the four or five or six different submissions based on the features of the system. If the system has four features, then you're going to have four submissions. If the system has five features, then you have five submissions. And that covers the 60%. So if you submit the first four milestones and one milestone out of the five, it means you have submitted your project and you don't get 100%, but you get a mark and, and it's, it's a complete, it's assumed a complete project. If you submit everything on time and all the features, then you get 100%, okay? Emergencies, immediately contact me. I'll tell you how to contact. Send me a message. If something happens, um, unfortunate things happen, some bad stuff in family, or I don't know, you have some mental breakdown and you, you're distressed or whatever. If there is any emergency happening and you cannot do something that has a timely thing, send a message to me immediately, and then we're going to take care of you. I will never let anything unexpected and problematic to cost you any marks, ever. Okay? I promise that. So if you are on a final test and you had an accident, I'll make sure that you're going to have your final test done later. So I'll do that for you. But you need to let me know. You cannot do the test and everything. I'll give you an F and they'll say, oh, by the way, I had an accident two weeks ago. That's why I didn't come to the test. And this is the documentation. It doesn't work that way. If something goes wrong, you immediately tell me. We'll take care of it later. Then you can provide whatever you want for it later. Okay? And one of the most important things that I want to tell you, and I know I'm talking about all these things, and it's just talking and talking. This old guy kept drilling our brains with this nonsense. I understand that. But something very important for you. Seek for help early. In first, in last two weeks of the semester, I am not available. I'm lost. You cannot find me. The first 12 weeks, and I'm, I'm, I am all yours. In week one, you see you have a problem, you immediately tell me so I can grab your hand, teach you the stuff that you don't know, so you can continue. Okay? Don't come at the end of the semester and say, I screwed up everything, and if I don't pass this thing, I'm going to die. It's not going to happen that way. You have to let me know early if you have any problems so I can help you. I have a time to help you. Knowledge is not an injection that I can give you in last week of a semester and suddenly you know everything. And take this out of your mind that I can do it in two weeks. If you could do it in two weeks, while you're in college, just go learn it and you're a genius. Go work for Google or something. I don't know. Go, go work for Elon Musk. Right? But if you can't do it in two weeks, it means you need guidance, it means you need me. Please be early in, in your help seeking things. So that's that. Content. Course information. The most important thing is Ani, Sego, Pegutit, Niwi, Kidme, Mumpy, A Young, Anishnavek, Asian Kozant, Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Mige, Windak, Pine, Gayat, Mumpy, Ake.
Bojo Wache, Beshagamopi Williams Treaty Ge. Don't take this as something simple or something that each prof does. Go read about indigenous people of this country. We are on their land, and the fact that we are here and doing this costs them their everything. Don't take this as a joke. Don't laugh. I don't know if you're a Canadian citizen. I don't know if you're a permanent resident. I don't know what is your religion. I don't know if you're a Christian, atheist, Muslim, whatever you are. Good for you. Go and learn about them. I was like you, I was like, come on, it's just another political thing, they're trying to be woke. No, that's not the case. Please, go and read about them. You're gonna have tears in your eyes for a week. And you have to respect them for what they are and what their beliefs are, okay? That's, that was, that's a very serious thing, all right? All right. The addendum, that's what you're gonna have your quiz on. So I'm going to ask you over here, what is the schedule week the day, day for lab? You have to tell me Thursday. <laughs> what is your, your section? You have to tell me NBB, okay? These are the questions I'm going to ask. Because believe me, you're going to come to me on week 12, and I'm going to say, what's your section? You're going to say, I don't know, okay? You are in section NBB, okay? Remember that. So all the things that you see in this addendum, they are all in the question for the first quiz. I'll call that one quiz zero, okay? <laughs> like workshop zero. Anyways, go through all these things and read it. What are the uh, uh, primary things that you need to know? No matter how big I make it, it make it small. Oh, it's like that. Sorry, it's not like this. Now I know. My apologies. There we go. You must have a passing average, okay, for the course, which means to pass this subject, you must get 50% overall, okay, and a weighted passing average for midterm and final assessment. So two tests that we do, 33% for the midterm, 66.667%, okay, 0.333 for the midterm, 0.667 for the final. That's their co that's their uh, the, the, uh, their their weights. So you that average should be above 50 percent. You get you get these two things. It's a pass. Okay. None of the other things are mandatory. If you don't submit your project, you didn't submit your project. But that's gonna affect a lot. Be careful. It has the, it it weighs a lot. So you gotta be careful about it. Okay. So that's that one. Workshops and stuff, and quizzes too, by the way. Quizzes, um, uh, they have the weights of their own. So when you look at all the weights that we have over here, you have workshops 15%, project 15%, quizzes 15%. That's 45% of the mark. And you have 55% on mid test and final. Okay? And that's the, the, the values that you have. GitHub organization for workshops. I do everything differently than, than all the other IPC 144 sections. That's why we have an IPC 144 NBB only in the organization. You have their own workshops, you have your own projects, you have your own notes. I, as a matter of fact, I think I'm the, I'm the only one who actually puts the notes up. You'll see how it works in two seconds. So. I'll talk about GitHub, you know, you're gonna know what it is. So everything is gonna be here. Anything I, if I sneeze in class, it's gonna be on this, okay? Uh, a day after. Anything I do is going to be here. So for all those notebook lovers and those uh, uh, people who come with laptops, we have only one processing processor for our language uh, processing. We process, we, our processor for language is only one. When you get distracted by a screen, you will not learn what I tell you. We will not learn what I just told you. 
okay? I respect you. If you can handle that, it's your choice. It's not mandatory in my class. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would love to be able to do that, but I'm not doing it. If I were you, I would go to the dollar store, get that $2 notebook with a pencil, and take the notes like that. Keystrokes does not do anything to the information in your brain. That's happening with your subconscious. It's happening not with your brain, but with the thing here. The, the one that you <sighs> helps you breathe, that's the one that helps you type. You don't think about your typing. Therefore, no processing is happening. When you write, you actually transfer knowledge into an analog device and write it on paper. That submits it to your permanent memory, at least short-term memory. So, and anything I do in class, it's going to be here anyway. You don't need to take any notes. You just need to listen. All the notes I write is going to be on GitHub. Anything I do. And uh, like, uh, not in IPC 144, because you are beginners, I don't want you to have the access to the previous things that we had. But if you go to my OOP 2441, just to show you how it's going to look like, this is my OOP 244 next semester repository. These are all the previous semesters. Just look at this. Let's say this semester, uh, 31, I'll go over here, uh, section NAA on February 10th. This is what I've done in class. When you click on it, that's the code. I did that in class. It's there. If you want to listen to what I was saying when I was doing that, you can just come down over here. Eek. There we go. Click on whatever, February what? Whatever it was, February 10th. There you go, February 10th, overloading, and here it is. Uh, I'm going to have a quick review. Anything I do in class is recorded. The thing that I'm doing right now is recorded. So and I am recording that, that I'm recording to, a recording. Okay? Um, anyway, so, wow, your notes so, are not so everything's going to be up, so you're going to see it like that. All the things that I do gets recorded, and you can later on see it. But please, again, do not trust it. Okay? Things go wrong. Recordings get lost. Don't miss a class because we have a recording. Okay? Because sometimes it doesn't happen. And for that purpose, I'm not putting my IPC 144 archives over here because IPC students, no offense, are not uh, mature enough to understand that they have to be in class. Uh, if I provide those things, of course, you can go on YouTube and Google it. You're going to find that, uh, some playlist from somewhere. But again, it's very important to be in class. Very important. So that's that. So everything's going to be up here. You're going to see where the so as soon as so later on you're going to see uh, um, over here that you can go to notifications and set up the notifications. Uh, I'm logging in. Oh shoot! Everything is now uh, multiple factors, so I have to do this now. So yeah, so. Uh, what I wanted to say was, what I wanted to say, lost it, as easy as that. Anyways, anything that you'll see, it's going to be here. Uh, um, so, uh, oh, so what I was saying is, are you seeing here, it says unwatch. It means I am watching this. When it says unwatch, it means I'm watching this, which means if any change happens to this, I automatically get an email. When you do your workshop zero as I asked you to do and create your GitHub account. You log into your GitHub account and you click watch to IPC 144B only. Anytime I post a workshop or I make a correction to something and it happens all the time. I give you a workshop, there is a boo-boo somewhere that I have to fix. You get notified for it immediately that this workshop was added or this thing was fixed and you just click on it and it shows you exactly what is changed, okay? So you've got to be notified, so do that, OK? And one thing I want to tell you, I don't know why you are here. I suspect around 80% of you are here because you want to learn to be a programmer or get into IT industry. 10% of you are here because your dad was a computer guy and he forces you to come over here. And 10% probably over here just 
because they want to get a PR card or I don't know what you want to do. Like some, something like that. But what I'm saying is that for any reason that you are here, okay, if you want to be visible to the world, create your GitHub account. That helps you tremendously when the time comes and you want to get hired for a business. They Google your name and the very first thing comes up is GitHub. As soon as they say, see GitHub, your resume goes to the one that are going to be interviewed. Because GitHub is a place developers develop code. And if you are on it, it means you're a developer. You have experience. And when you look at it, that you started it at 2024, that's where you got into GitHub. And it's now 2027 and you're graduated, three years you've been on GitHub, that's a huge thing. You're not an entry level anymore, okay? And if they ask for a sample of code, you simply make a piece of code that you have public, and you say, go to GitHub and take a look at it. I put it on a public repository, okay? Be careful, all your repositories for the work should be private, otherwise you're gonna be uh, um, um, caught as cheater, okay? You're gonna be cheating. Because if so, if you have, without you knowing, if you make your repository public, somebody picks up your code, then you get flagged because your assignment is identical to another one, and you both, and they, you say, I didn't do anything, just my repository was public. It's like, I don't know, I just put my gun over here and somebody picked it and shot someone else. Not my fault, I left it over there. It is your fault, you left it open. You shouldn't, okay? Remember, okay? So, follow workshop zero, go through workshop zero, and do it, and if you have any problem, let me know. Again, the workshop zero was designed for OOP244, so if you see over there anything says C++, you say C to yourself. They are all the same, okay? We are just setting up the system. Uh, send that, so this thing is for all the students to go through, uh, except for the last one. The step 12 is for my class, which you add me as a collaborator to your repository. I'll go through all these things, which means I will have access to where you do your code. Therefore, you have any question, you simply, you don't need to send me anything. You simply tell me, Farhad, this is my repository. I have a problem. I open up your repository right in front of your face. I'll fix it. I'll commit it. You download all the changes and GitHub tells you your code was like this. Now it's like this. You can compare and see exactly what I did to fix it. Okay? We'll go through it. That's your workshop zero that you're gonna go through. Office, how to contact me? What is my, ah, uh, the code, the, 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 the course is designed to work with Visual Studio, okay? Those people who are Linux people or Mac people have grudges against, grudges against Microsoft. If you are in programming industry, you shouldn't take grudge against any, like me, Macs are against my religion. I, I hate that company. I hate Apple as a company. They are bullies. They are bad people to work with if you are programming with. I don't like them. But I work with Mac. Why? Because I want to sell my stuff. Okay? I, I love Linux. That's the most beautiful thing that ever happened to humanity. Really. But I'm using Windows because I have a 10-year-old. Actually, my 10-year-old likes Apple stuff, iPhone and iPad. Kill me now. But anyway, so, so that's, that's what it is. So again, don't, if you like something, go towards it, but you have to learn other stuff too. Visual Studio is an integrated development environment created for developing code. It gives you humongous amount of help and makes your life much easier. But it needs a little bit of learning. It's like... You need to learn to drive. It's, it's not too that difficult. You learn to drive. But when you do, you can drive a car. You can go from 100 kilometers in an hour. That's amazing. It's the same thing with this one. So it is a little tricky at the beginning. And I'll do it in front of you. And I'll record it and put it. You just follow my instructions. After three days, you get used to it. And we don't want you to use Internet Explorer to write an amazing crazy thing. We want you to write very small little bitty bitty stuff. And it's very simple stuff you are writing. So relax. 
I'll show you very simple steps to go through it, and you do it five times. The sixth time is just the second thing for you. You just do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for those people who have Mac, you can use Xcode. I put in workshop zero for Xcode. If you can install, if you can install Fusion VMware and install Windows 10 for Fusion on your computer. The, 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 the Mac, is that a Mac machine that I'm pointing at? It's not. Is it? Oh, is it a Mac? <laughs> you covered the, the Apple on it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So some of you have Macs with processors. They call it, I think, M1 or something. Those can, uh, cannot do, they, they, those processors are mobile processors. They are not. They are not powerful to do anything. They're just to browse internet and stuff like that. Um, so for that, no Fusion Schmusion. You can install Xcode on that and do something with it. But with Xcode, it comes very, uh, my help is very limited. I can help you with uh, uh, programming problems. But if something technical goes wrong, I have no idea how Mac works. I, I, it, I, I can't do anything if my life depends on depend it. Actually, those demos, I did it on my daughter's computer. So, so you'll see. Anyway, so. Um, Install Windows 10 on Fusion. Why? Because you're going to have many things that is required to be done on Microsoft. And if you want to set Microsoft aside and only do Mac, you are cutting off, what, 50% of the industry? That's not good. You want to be available for everything. You want to make money, right? So learn everything. And if you, if you love Mac, then take the courses that you have, at, like uh, iOS development. You can actually, you actually have subjects that you do iOS development in. That's beautiful. Take that one and you are only doing that. But it's a good idea to know what Visual Studio is. So if you can do these steps and have Windows 10, first do Windows 10 and then do Workshop Zero. If you don't have it and you want to use Xcode, you're comfortable with it, sure, go through it, uh, the uh, instructions of that. I think I have something on my, on my playlist that shows how to, uh, how to install Xcode. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll find out and I'll send it to you so you'll see how the Xcode install. It's like any other app. Go to the App Store and type Xcode. It comes up. You install it. It takes seven hours, but you, you install it. Okay? And after it's installed, it's a very simple process to go through. Bored enough? Sorry. Lots of information to go through. How to keep contact. Install Microsoft Teams app. Don't use the web version because it's not fully featured. Okay, install, my, install Microsoft Teams. And when you do that, when you click on the office, it takes you to actually the team that I'm going to add you all to it. So it should open the Teams. Give it a second now. It's going to authenticate me again, I believe. Sorry, this is my backup computer. The, the other one didn't work. Anyway, oh, oh, it is connected. I'm authenticated. Okay, Joseph requested to join my team. So, uh, so if you actually, if you actually click on it and go to it, you can request to join before I join you uh, manually, and I'm gonna say accept all. So you're gonna actually get to it. There you go. So those people are accepted now. They are in the team, and what happens is that more people. Wow, accept all. Good. All right. All right, so that's that. Uh, so you're going to get to that team, and that team thingy is something that is shared between all of us. If you post the question for me, if I pick it up, fine. If I didn't pick it up, any of you know who, who knows the answer, you can, you can help them. Collaboration in my class is not only allowed, but also encouraged. I want you to work with each other and learn, okay? That's important. It doesn't mean cheating. It doesn't mean get someone else's code and submit as your own. But to work with somebody to learn, that's how we learn. Nobody learns by themselves, okay? So do that. If I get the question, I get the question. If I don't, I don't. Then someone else will pick it up. But another thing, how do you contact me? I don't set office hours like ours because any office hours I put, some of you will be busy at that time. So what I did is this. From 9 to 5 every day, you book an appointment with me using 
Microsoft assistance uh, using uh, uh, scheduling assistance. So, uh, and I'll mention it, and you'll see it over there. So we'll go through it. So using that, you can find the common time that I'm free and book an appointment. Please don't book more than 30 minutes. Let's start with 30. If we need more, we're going to go through it. Okay? So you can book an appointment with 9 to 5 any day. It doesn't have to be uh, at a specific time. That's why I don't put office hours, and it's all by appointment. Another rule that I have, anybody is on Microsoft Teams now? Anybody? You are? No? Is anybody on Microsoft Teams now? Are you on your phone? Okay. Can you see my status? What does it say? Fardad. F-A-R-D-A-D. F-A-R-D-A-D. That's the first one. It's re you see it's red? Okay. That's because I have everything that I do set up in my calendar. Everything. Even the time that I'm commuting from here to home, that I put it in there to make sure that you don't book an appointment at that time. If it's time to pick up my daughter from school, I put that one as busy time. So if you see that busy sign over there, respect it. I'm busy. I'm in a meeting. I'm teaching like now. Don't call me. Okay? But if you see this status, it's either green or yellow. Green or yellow. It means either I am at the desk, it's green, or yellow, I am out, I'm out in a kitchen. Okay? If it rings and I hear it, I'm going to come and answer. If I... If I don't hear it, I come, I see there's a missed call, I call you back. So that's the thing. Call me at any time that I'm either green or yellow. There is no problem with that. Please not after 5 o'clock, 9 to 5. five. After 5 is family time, unless you want to see me divorced. Okay, so please, not after 5. Please, okay? Uh, so, yes, sir. Oh, it's, in a, I'll, I'll explain. You'll see. Give me two seconds. Yes, sir. You just click on office. Oh, you'll see. OK, so you see over here, when you come to your course, it says GitHub organization. You click over here. You come to my page. Scroll down. It says office. Well, I don't know why is it broken now. But you click on that, it brings you to Microsoft Teams. Okay, so just follow the links. I don't want to tell you, but <clears throat> to contact me personally, go to Microsoft Teams, log in with your school ID, so you're in Seneca, type Fardad, you'll see my ugly face. Just click on it and send me a message. Right? <coughs> That's that one. For, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept all those people who are asking, but, and, and I'm going to add it later on too. But, Next thing I wanted to tell you is to book an appointment. I need 48 hours to be able to 100% reply to yours. If you give it to me a day early, I might be able to accept it. Okay? Don't, if it's 1 o'clock, don't set an appointment for 1.15 and expect me to accept it. I can't do that, okay? Uh, because I'm doing work. I'm doing, I'm marking students. I'm designing workshops. I'm doing work. So, I'm not always looking at Microsoft Teams 24-7, okay? So I put a 48 hours response to whatever you do. If you, submit some, if you submit a request for an appointment two days from now, I'll try to uh, accept it. If it's the next day, it's not 100%, okay? If it's an hour from now, 99%, I'm not going to respond to it, okay? Just keep that in mind. Uh, Oh, this session is boring. I like to teach. That's a good part of it. Uh, this how-to videos for C, C++ core objects is workshop zero, but workshop zero has an additional step 12. When you go to workshop zero, it's identical to this one. So that's that one. Um, office and help, faculty information, everything is in here. So you have all the information over here, how you're so, and uh, sir, click on that, okay? You click on that, a YouTube video comes up that I captured for my IPC students a year ago, how to book an appointment using scheduling assistant. You click on that, 
and it shows you how to do it. So go to faculty information and you will see it. Um, online office and help is a link to office again. When you click on that, it opens uh, Microsoft Teams again, as you see. Comes up like that. And let me just answer this because except all. Oh. It's overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, I'm clicking, but it's Okay, hopefully it's going to accept one day. We'll see. Anyway, so that's that. But I'm going to add you manually too anyway. So if you didn't even ask that one, you're going to be in it. Uh, Seneca Student Resources, take a look at them. Blackboard Lotra Resources tells you what it is. Emergency online session is something extremely important that you need to know. I'm 60 years old. I catch cold, corona, stuff happens. I don't cancel classes. Okay, so you don't see any, unless something really bad happens. If any type of thing happened that I can't come to school, I don't cancel the class. We go online. Okay, that online, emergency online session, all you need to do is to click on it and wait for me to start the session. So emergency online session on the thing, you go over there. Three years later, it comes up, and I'm going to click on launch. It launches the session. See, it says I put obviously emergency online session. I'm going to say join the session. And big blue button starts. Hopefully, one day. <laughs> Again, stay one, these things happen. Uh huh. Yeah, there you go. So when it comes up, it comes on microphone. Okay? Never come and listen only. If you come and listen only, I'll kick you out. Listen only, we can watch the recording later while you're bothering us. Right? Listen only means I'm just here to listen. I don't want to participate in class. I talk to you people, and you will see. I'll come to you one by one and ask questions. That's how I teach. And it's the same thing over here. So microphone and have a headset. It's extremely important to have a headset. Because if you're, there are two of you side by side and the speakers work, one microphone picks up the other speaker and we're going to have a feedback. We don't want that. So have a headset. Bring a headset with you and use it. It's, it's, it's important to use that. Click on microphone. When you click on microphone, allow the microphone to pick it up. To pick and it up. you need to hear you need yourself. To hear echo, echo, hello, hello. You see that? You, you see have that? to hear that. Hear if that. you don't see this thing don't moving, see this thing, and you don't and hear you yourself, don't hear your it, echo, it means your microphone, it means is, your not microphone set properly, is not set properly. Set it properly. Set it properly. Okay? okay? After you hear After yourself, you hear and, you yourself see and you see this thing down, going up and down, then you say, then join, you say audio, join audio. And three years later, you immediately mute yourself. Okay? So when I ask you a question, when I say, for that, tell me this, you unmute and you talk, like we are in class. Are we okay? See, I said, are we okay? He said, yes. I'm going to do the same thing over there. All right? And you're going to see slides coming up. I share my screen. It's exactly as if we are in class. No difference. Okay? It happens all the time. So that's there. And be proud of this thing. Seneca code is in here. My OP345 students, for eight years, we worked on this thing. And we, lots of our code is in this one. We contributed a lot. And many of our students, I think three or four right now, are working in high uh, 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 spots at Blindside Networks in, in Ottawa that built this Blindside, this big blue button. It's a, be proud of it. It's a Seneca, Seneca product. Anyways, and then I'm going to end the session. 
So that's how you do it, and it's very simple and straightforward. It's a beautiful one. Thank you. Send feedback. Click OK. All right. That's that. So there's going to be a quiz on all these things the next lap. So all the things that you see over here, there's going to be a quiz. I'll give you 10 attempts, 10 attempts to do it. And you must get 100% in it, not 95. Okay, 100% in it to be able to do any other thing in this subject. Any other quiz, anything else, only becomes visible if that quiz number zero has 100% uh, uh, correct answer, okay? So I'm sorry, I'm just forcing you to know what are your rights in this class, okay? And I'm letting you do it 10 times to get it right. Even, I can do it even unlimited, it doesn't matter. So I just want you to make sure that you actually do it, okay? So that's that. All right, question break one. Any questions? Yes, sir. Next week on the class, right? No, I'm going to actually let you do it at home. I'll open it up, and it's going to be done by the next lap. If I finish it today, I'm going to do it today. Whenever it comes up, I'll let you know. And I'm going to leave it open for a week. So quiz number one, it's some, it hap but you should finish it before. Quiz number zero, you should do it before quiz one, because quiz one depends on it. Okay, so as soon as it comes up, please do it. All right. Uh, any other question? Suggestion? Yes. I missed the orientation day, so uh, uh, what are the programs that should I uh, download? Or okay, so, so the very first thing that I suggest, that find one of the students who got in and ask for their help. Because I, I know kind of what it is, and I'm going to tell you, but students who were here, they know better than me, because I, I, I didn't take. But uh, I know there's a Global Protect. It's a VPN that you have to install. That Global Protect that you install, you enter. It's called Global Protect VPN. And just type Seneca, Google, Seneca Global Protect. And if you do it on YouTube, an Indian speaking person is going to tell you for some reason how to do it. It was, it was really funny, actually. <laughs> it was interesting. But uh, if you know how to speak Hindi, sure. But anyways, I don't know if it, even if it was Hindi, but it's some language that I didn't understand. But anyways, uh, but uh, uh, it, the link comes up and open it up, install it, log into it. When you log in on your computer, it's as if you're in Seneca. So you can have access to things that we need okay, uh, to work with. There is one uh, cluster. Uh, anybody over here knows what's cluster? What does it mean when we say cluster? Cluster is a. <laughs> it's, like a it's like a group of servers in the cloud basis. It's, it's group of servers, he says, but he's, he said cluster in computer terms. Good. Cluster is pack of things. Any pack of identical things together is a cluster of those, okay? I can have cluster of grapes, right? <laughs> like, so essentially, grapes come as a cluster, <laughs> okay? Something like that. So we have cluster of computers. <laughs> yeah, he's very, he's very uh, you know, visual, and cluster is a... Uh, all right, so, so class, uh, we have a cluster of computers over here. We call it Matrix, okay? Matrix, the movie, remember that? So, this cluster, uh, it has a cluster of uh, computers. It has Linux on it. So it acts like one computer. There are like 100 computers connected to each other. They act like, so, so it's a supercomputer. It's Linux, and all you guys have accounts on it. That's where we submit our workshops. So everything that you write, any C program that you write in your Visual Studio or your Xcode or any platform that I'm going to introduce to you as soon as possible, after that, you have to take that code and then compile it again, run it again on 
on Matrix and submit it from there. So I have written a program that you actually put your code on Matrix and you tell to the program, submit it to Farlad. So the program gets it, checks it, makes sure everything is good, output is correct, and everything's fine. If everything is good, it emails them all to me. So when I get something from you, I know it works. How good it's written, I'll be the judge of that. But if it's worthy to submit, that's what the program does. And make sure all the files are proper names and all the good things, okay? But I'll go through that. Many of you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say write a program. It's very fine. I'm just talking so you get used to the lingo. I'll go through all those things step by step. So, time, 11.06. We have till 35, right? Yep. Is it voluntary or mandatory? That's not a good idea. It's a good idea. It's, it's a good idea to actually join those uh, supported learning groups. I think one of the students initiated that. And actually, last semester, asked me to take some sessions in it. Uh, so it's a good idea to do that. It's like students working together. Always do that. Always join. Any type of community that you can join to to help each other, go there and try to learn from it. It's extremely important. Okay? Sometimes students with good intentions just give you the answer. Learn from it. Getting the answer will not help you. Okay? Remember, with all these workshops and stuff that you do, you still have to pass those two tests. And over there, you're on your own. I'm very easy when it comes to marking. I mark very gra uh, gracefully. Let's put it that way. Okay? But my tests are not very simple. What I mean is that if you have done your workshops, if you have tried doing your own workshops, it's a guarantee you'll pass my tests perfectly. If you have tried doing your workshop, I didn't say successfully, okay? But when you do your test, I know if you did or not. It's very simple. It's very simple, right? Let's say this door opens with a push of a button, but no other door does, right? And you come over here and you just push that button and the door opens and you go out, okay? When somebody comes in and goes to the door and does like that, then it doesn't open. You know that that person has never been in this classroom, correct? That's your coding. When you're coding something like that and I see something gibberish that doesn't make any sense, I know you didn't study. It's very easy because programming language is something very specific. It's not something that you can, like a dice, roll it and something good comes up. You need, but the good thing is that because it's a very simple thing to learn, C language has only 13 keywords, one, three. That's it. You speak with 13 keyboards, one, three. It's a very simple thing to learn. It's like learning to, to talk to something that is very, that has very uh, low intelligence. And that's essentially a computer, okay? So don't worry about it. Everything's going to be good in that matter. Because I saw some worrisome in your face. You're like, what, really? No, it's not, it's not that bad. Okay, so, um, okay. so now it's 11.09. You want to get a break for five minutes or you want to go out early? How many people want to get a break for five minutes? Okay, good. Ooh, I have a good class. Usually half a class is, let's go. Okay, so let me, let me tell you what's going on. There is this guy, there is this guy call, called Linus Torval. Anybody heard that name? No one. <laughs> Linus Torvald. In his basement, he created an operating system called Linux. Okay? And he said, the heck with it. I'm going to make it available to everyone. Actually, he gave the source code of the operating system to everyone and said, this is what I wrote. If anybody wants to check it out and even contribute to it, fine, do it. He did it, and now 20,000 developers around the world and organizations are contributing to it. And we have so many different flavors of it. We have. Linux, we have Fedora, we have Ubuntu, we have 
uh, you name it. Uh, I can keep going. Send OS. And I can keep going with different things. Of, but it's the operating. It's the, after it became open, it is the largest open collaboration in the world. Okay? So, but not everybody could just give their code. They, it has to be checked to make sure that they are not giving garbage. So taking care of bringing all these code together and make this operating system together became something that Linus couldn't take over, couldn't handle. Genius that he is, he wrote another tool. Called that tool Git. Git is a tool that is like a big brother always watching. So what you do when you have it on your computer and you create a repository and tell to Git, watch this, I'm working in this. It looks and keeps track of every single move that you make. Every single time you tell to Git, commit, it means remember this time, I may want to come back to it. So you are writing your program, you're writing it, that essay that you're writing for English. And you have, you have to go to Washington, you want to pee. You commit, and you say, going to pee. And you save it. You run to the washroom, you come back. You do it, do it, do it, do it, and you go at the, ah, uh, I hate this. I want to go back to the time that I wanted to go to washroom and do it again. You can simply tell to Git, revert back to the time to go to pee. It comes back to that part. So remember, when I teach you, and you do workshop zero, and you install Git on your computers, Keep committing. All these commits show your involvement. And all the commits is like credits you buy on, on GitHub. When an employer looks at it and he says you have 32,000 commits, it means this person is really active. He's really programming. OK? So keep committing. Not BS commits. I mean commits that like finished function this. Finish that. Finish this part of the pro. Fin you can even create private repositories for anything that you have. For your, I don't know, EAC 150 English class. For your essays. No problem. It just keeps track. It's like one drive, but with intelligence. <laughs> okay, it's not just the place to dump your stuff in. It actually looks over them. And the good thing is that you write something, so this Git that he wrote, it became so popular, a company called GitHub said, I'm going to get, I'm going to build a cluster of computers and let people from everywhere in the world create Git repositories on it so they can actually push and pull stuff into it. Git is a distributed tool, which means it's, there is no server, there is no client. Like right now, when you go on a website, you are the client. The website is on a server. Everybody knows that, right? Everybody. Is there anybody who doesn't know this? When you go on a website, the page that you see is on a server somewhere, right? That's client, server. Git is not like that. Every Git that is installed is a fully functional server. So you're essentially connecting all the servers. So the Git you have on your laptop, on your Apple laptop is identical one to the identical to the one on GitHub. All you need to do is to keep them in sync. So whatever you have in here, when you push it to GitHub, everything goes there. Your commits go there, your history go there, and you tell me for that I have a problem with my code. So you push your code from your computer to GitHub, and you add me as a collaborator. I'll open up your repository. I'll take it out, and you tell me this file has problem. I'll go over there, I look at what the problem is, I fix it, and I'm going to say, far that's fix, commit it, and push it. So first I created the go back to thingy, commit, right? And then I pushed it. So what you do, you pull it on your computer, and you just click on far that's fix, it brings two screen. Left side is you, right side is mine with highlighted stuff of what I fixed. And you can keep track of everything. And that happens with everything. So you will learn through that workshop zero to create a Git repository on Git, clone it on your computer, clone it on Matrix. So you don't need to move any files from your computer to Matrix to submit anything to me. 
you do your stuff on your computer when it's satisfactory, you push it. It goes to Matrix. Uh, goes to GitHub, right? Then you log into Matrix, you say pull. It gets everything from Matrix and you have everything on Matrix. So makes your life easy and you start your programming studies like a pro. Every single thing that you do is you are like adding money to your bank account. Remember that. All the things that I'm teaching you now, later you're going to thank me when you're going to that employee and you see how active you are on GitHub. So anything you do, do it on GitHub. Take it on me. This is important. When I hired my research assistants, that's the first thing I did. I Googled their name to see if they have a GitHub account. They didn't. I didn't even look at their resume. A person who doesn't know how to work with the code repository is not from this era. It's coming from dinosaur's time. I don't want them. Like if somebody comes over here, so I only know a rotary phone. I cannot use a cell phone. You want to hire them? No, you don't, right? So keep that in mind. So that was a quick history of what Git is. And nobody knows Git because that genius guy wrote it. It's a very complicated thing. It can do magical stuff. Well, we don't know. We don't need that. We just need. Five commands out of it, maybe. It's a clone, commit, push, pull, and add. That's it. That's it. There's five things. You create a repository on, on GitHub. You clone it on your computer. You clone it on Matrix. You work on any of them. You commit. You push. It goes up. You pull. You work. It's all that, like that. So I'll, I'll go through all the details. Again, today, don't think that I'm actually teaching something to you. I'm just giving you buzzwords. I'm just bringing you into tone of what I'm about to teach. Okay, so don't get overwhelmed with the information that is coming. But please go through this and try to do workshop zero. I already have received three uh, three co collaboration requests from IPC 144. Thank you, whoever it was. Okay. Weekly schedule is there. Yeah, so everything is done. <sighs> Questions? Suggestions? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kathy Long? Yes. Okay. Kathy, Kathy, yes. If, uh, can, do you, if you can find the link, can you send it to me yeah. so I can? Okay. All right. So, yes. Should we use our uh, Seneca accounts or our personal? Account? Okay. A beautiful question. He said, when I'm creating my GitHub account, should I use my personal email or my Seneca email? On GitHub, you can have 50 different emails. I suggest while you're a student, have your primary email at Seneca, but add the other ones too. So the other ones gain reputation too. When the time passes and you graduate, you can simply switch and make the other one, but never delete your Seneca email. Let it be there, even if it doesn't work. Just make your primary something new. That's the best way. Okay, so you can have many different emails, but have your Seneca as primary for now because of that watch thingy. Because anything on GitHub you watch, if it's changed, it sends an email to your primary account, tells you that it's changed. Anything else? Thank you for the question. A another thing, use your opera voice when you are uh, asking a question. La, 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 you know, be loud, okay? F uh, why? Because I'm deaf, I cannot hear you properly. No, I'm joking, I'm just, <laughs> we are Canadians, which means we talk all the languages in the world, right? So, and we have the, like, one of my students say, I cannot spot it. You have a mixture of Italian, Russian, Arabic, Turkish accent. So I don't, I don't even know what I am anymore. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So we don't understand each other perfectly. When we are not going like this, we know you have to be. You see, you cannot see what I'm saying. Yeah, be loud. So when you're asking a question, say, I didn't understand. Can I use my email on GitHub? Not, not like, if I use my email on GitHub, sure. Be very loud. Okay, sir? <laughs> Very loud. <laughs> Opera voice, please. All right? Um, what else? Okay, now about that question that I told you to think about. What do you want your professor not to do?
What do you want your professor not to do? Seriously? You all failed. <laughs> no, ser <laughs> no, seriously, what do you, like, uh, any, yes, go ahead. Only, the only thing is that when uh, I send the professor email or a message, but you already clarified this. Already. Yeah, yeah, so. So if there is no response, uh, or there is. That's disappointing. My word, this is the only thing that Okay, I all right, so, so, two things over here brought up. That's why I say, ask it. First of all, how to communicate with me? Please don't send email to me. I have 50 million emails coming every day. It's going to just, if you want to get a response after you graduate, fine. Okay? If you want to talk to me, please send a direct message on Teams. Find my name at the top, send me a message on Teams. Then I'll see that I have these messages and I can answer. At least I can tell you, I'll answer this three days later. Remind me of it. Okay? Even if I can't answer, I'll tell you that I got your message and yada, yada, yada. That's number one. Uh, expect a 20, uh, 48 hours. That 48 hours is rarely happening, okay? Uh, but I just put it over there to just cover my bases, okay? In case something happens. Uh, usually, uh, weekends, I do not check anything. Usually. I do work on weekends, so I may see it. Uh, so you said uh, uh, email and, yeah. So that's stuff. So emails, please don't. Unless you want to send something to log something, like something emergency happened and you want to, you didn't have any access to anything other than email, send me an email at that time. So you tell me, far that I sent you an email then, okay? Um, yeah, any other question? He's already getting ready to go, hurry up. Any other question? <laughs> Don't be so serious with me. Guys, I still look at you and you're looking at me as if I'm like this. Um, I don't know, monster who wants to destroy you. I'm not, I'm not. Really believe me. You've got to find me. Nah, I'm not saying a nice guy, but uh, I'll be okay. Yes? Uh, can you use uh, Visual Studio Mac instead of Xcode? No, Mac doesn't accept Visual Studio. You can use Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is just an editor. It doesn't have any compiler. So Visual Studio Code, you can install it on Mac. That's what my wife uses. But... But uh, 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 you cannot compile anything with a Microsoft compiler with that. You have to set it up, and you're on your own to set it up so it can use the G GCC compiler that is on your thing. We didn't talk about anything like C. That's the first session that we have. So when you're coming, well, I'm going to go through all that. So this today, I have it as an uh, uh, extra class that I had because it was the lab. And, and in a lab, I can't do anything. Okay, so anything else? Yes. We officially know who the speaker of the house is. Go ahead. So my question is about the feedback. You usually, uh, do you usually provide? Uh, feedback. feedback, feedback, thank you. See, that was the second thing that I forgot. Feedback, feedback, okay? And I'll be done in two minutes. Feedback. You're gonna have what I call a code review. Code review is what I do at least with each student once throughout the semester, which I ask them to join me in a meeting, and I'll go through all the code they have written from the beginning of the semester. That's me. And you have to tell me how you did it. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to contact you for a code review for workshop three, four, and five, which means you have to come, and I will open up your workshop three, and I'll tell you what this part does. You need to be able to answer me. Otherwise, we'll be in big trouble. Because if you don't know what your code does, it means you didn't write it. Correct? So that's one. Number two, code review from you. At any moment of time that you need, you, you think you need feedback on your code, don't wait for me. Book an appointment with me, write it, code review. And I'll open up your repository, I'll open, and I'll help you with it. I'll go through every single detail. So anytime you want code review, do, do that. Number three, I may send you short messages, templated short messages with links that tells you, uh, for example, XBC, uh, your header file is not included properly. You click on it, it takes you to a sample code which it made the mistake similar to yours and how to fix it. That's when I'm marking your workshops. That's not very good feedback. And it's physically impossible to go through everyone's code and actually comment a good comment and give it back. That's why I urge you to please voluntarily 
contact me to review, review your codes and give you feedback on your stuff. And I will glad you go, grow through it and give you very nice pointers. Okay? All right. Anything else? Any question? One? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. The quiz, quiz zero is going to be up any time. Okay. Quiz one is going to be not, not this lab, but the lab after. No, it's going to be this lab. You're right. It's this lab. The lab. So we have a lecture coming up. And then after that, yes, that's quiz one. So next week, you have your quiz one. But quiz zero is going to be up, and you should do it before you come to the lab. Any question one? Any question two? Any question three? Questions? Suggestions? I was going to be the final. Huh? The final? Woo! Ask me later. <laughs> final is going to be on a computer. And uh, everything's going to be on a computer. It's just a big, I don't know how do I respond to it. It's a, it's a final. All the questions, all the subjects, all the stuff in a, uh, during the session. Ask me next day you're coming. Oh, OK. All right. Read this stuff over there. Information about final, everything is there. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? No? Yes. Workshop zero? It's in your things. You click on it, everything's going to be in there. So what are we going to do with that? Series of, I'll, I'll come and tell you. Click on workshop zero. Click on it. Click on it. Your videos. One, two, three. Watch the video. Do it. Okay. All of them. All right. Have yourself a beautiful day. Yes, it's uh, two on fifteenth. No problem.